Welcome back, everyone. I'm Michael Finney. This is Consumer Talk on KGO. Um, A very interesting question. Are optimists too likely to trust a salesperson? There was a recent article in the Journal of Consumer Research, and it actually originated, at least originated, at least in part, at St. Mary's College right here. Uh, With that is Andrew Wilson, who's joining us on the live line right now. Hey, Andrew, thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Very interesting research here. How did so? Basically, you were looking at do optimists over trust, right? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, as you mentioned, this is uh, I, I am at St. Mary's College of California, and this is work that I conducted along with a co-author, Peter Dark, of the Schulich School of Business at York University in Toronto. And what we looked at in these studies is the way that consumers' trust judgments of retail salespeople are related to their worldview uh, in terms of whether they see the world as a just place, a world where good people get good outcomes and and bad outcomes happen mostly to bad people. And we found that people who strongly hold that belief end up being a lot more optimistic in the way they trust salespeople. Boy, that explains a lot of my work, to tell you the truth here, Andrew, (laughs) with People uh, that, that write to me with, with consumer complaints, I always say, how could they have done that? And it's because they're trusting nice people. Yeah, that's right. So I, I'm sure in the work that you do, Michael, you run into buyer's remorse or the cognitive dissonance that occurs after uh, consumers commit to a purchase decision. And that's the kind of the, that psychological threat that, uh, that people um, encounter in the decision-making process. That's part of what we're studying. And what we found is that when people are faced with that buyer's remorse, consumers who strongly hold this belief that the world is a just place use that belief as a, as a resource to help cope with that psychological threat. And that has a, an ironic and somewhat surprising effect that those consumers end up trusting salespeople more uh, than consumers don't hold the belief, but only, only after they've made a purchase. Really? So when you're making the purchase... The rose-colored glasses aren't there. It's afterwards. It's afterwards, which is the reason we think it's a a bit ironic or a bit surprising is after the purchase, that's when the the psychological threat of buyer's remorse comes uh, comes into play. And so we would think sort of from a a rational perspective that uh, when there's a, a threat in the environment, that's when you should become less trusting, but we're observing the opposite. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Um, so is the opposite true? Is it that the person who's less optimistic, what happens to them when, oh. when something goes wrong? Yeah, excellent question, Michael. They actually do the exact opposite of what I've been saying. So we see that before the purchase decision, there's no difference in trust judgments pe- between people who hold this belief and don't, the optimists and pessimists, as we're referring to them here. But after the purchase decision, their trust judgments uh, diverge um, dramatically so that the, those who hold this belief that the world is just become more trusting and the people who don't hold the belief become less trusting. So nothing is really learned from either side. It just cements their previous thoughts. Um, well, uh, what we think it does is it, it helps them to cope with the, with the psychological threat. Um, and what, the reason I think it matters to, to consumers, to, to your listeners, Michael, uh, is because uh, I, I think, at least in one way, one of the important consequences for consumers is that if this is you, if you believe in a just world, if you uh, think you're a pretty optimistic person, then you might find yourself in a very trusting state following a purchase decision. And in that very trusting state, you might be more inclined to heed the advice or recommendations from a salesperson in terms of purchase of an extended warranty or accessory products or optional add-on products uh, that are suggested after you've committed to the purchase. So even though you're optimistic, you're still willing to say, yes, something could go wrong and I'm going to trust this guy about buying a warranty. Yeah, that's right. You're, you're sort of <laughs> optimistic at the level that this is all going to work out in the end. Who's correct? <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's a big question, Michael. <laughs> um, <laughs> You're giggling. Yeah, well, we, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, it's, it's a, it is a funny question because we have spent a, a fair amount of time talking about the extent to which uh, this is um, 
a good idea for consumers to engage in or not. And, and we think that, you know, like so many things, the answer is that it depends. Uh, there are cases, we think, where it, it is actually functional. Uh, one of the ways that we think it's functional is that consumers, we have evidence in these studies that consumers who are more trusting of the salespeople end up being more satisfied with the decisions that they make, um, you know, partly because they have, have coped with the uh, psychological uncertainty um, that others are experiencing. So in that way, it's functional. If you're happy with the purchase you make, that's sort of the goal. Um, and so it's, it's a good idea. But we think there are, are clearly circumstances where uh, consumers would be vulnerable to a sort of undue influence or uh, deceptive kind of persuasion, too. So, Give uh, me an example of one of those. Um, well, it's, I'll, I guess I'll go back to my uh, – uh, I'll underline my previous example, if, if that's okay. That, sure. Uh, when, uh, so after you've made a, a purchase decision, if you believe in a just world, our, uh, our, our evidence would say that you, you enter this sort of relatively more trusting state. And so if the salesperson at the cash register is now saying, you know, you've made a very wise purchase today, and the only way you could make it better is if you also bought – uh, this extended warranty uh, or these accessory add-on products or uh, the, these um, uh, these optional add-ons, uh, then and, and here's all the reasons why I think you should, um, then that evidence, th that argument that the salesperson is making is going to be um, taken in through a very trusting mindset. And, and we think that's one of the places where it could be not so um, functional for consumers. I notice when I'm in a restaurant, um, Andrew, and it doesn't even seem to matter what what level of restaurant anymore. When I order, the wait staff always tells me what a great choice I just made. <laughs> so what they're setting me up for is to go, well, look, the expert says I just made an ex. I, I just did great by ordering the ravioli. So now when I get the ravioli, I'm going to like it because I've already been backed up. Yeah, that's right. Our evidence would actually say that you're going to have a higher level of satisfaction because you're in this trusting state. Um, you, you feel satisfied with the, um, with the the decision that you made, and that would um, flow over into satisfaction with the actual experience of, of eating your ravioli. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm always waiting for a, a white person to say, that is perhaps the, the worst choice I've heard all evening. The, yeah, the, I wouldn't hold my breath on that, Mike. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Andrew E. Wilson, St. Mary's College of California. The rose-colored glasses are optimistic consumers more likely to trust salespeople. Let me, I, I guess I'm going to ask you one more quick question. Has this changed how you shop or buy? Oh, well, I, I do think that I believe in a, in a just world, um, despite uh, studying it. Uh, I, I think I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in this camp. So what I do myself and what I might recommend for others is I think it's a good idea for consumers who believe in the just world to bring along a more pessimistic friend on a shopping trip. That is to sort of bring a designated pessimist along with you, um, especially when you're shopping for more expensive items or those that involve, you know, a lot of assistance from a salesperson. So find someone who's just been divorced. <laughs> and drag him along with you. This study was done by Peter R. Dark. He's from York University. And our guest here, Andrew E. Wilson from St. Mary's College of California. Andrew, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Michael. It's been a uh, pleasure. I'm Michael Finney. This is Consumer Talk on KGM.